I'm back at Best Bet in Jacksonville, Florida today to play a huge game. I walk into the cashier, give them $25,000 worth of cash. They give me $25,000 worth of chips. I head to the live stream table where I'll be playing the biggest game I've ever played in my entire life. $5,100 with a $25,000 buy-in. I've got $15,000 behind, willing to risk. This is a huge game full of huge pots and massive swings. Let's get started. About 30 minutes into the stream, I get into a big one. Todd raises in the hijack to $250 before Alec, who has been very aggressive so far this session, three bets out of the cutoff to $800. I've got ace, 10 of diamonds on the button. I want to try to play some big pots versus two late position raises. I decide to put in a cold four bet to $2,000. Back over to Todd, who makes the fold, but Alec, playing $20,000 effective with me, ends up making the call. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, but Alec runs a training site about getting better at poker. Back in July of 2018, when I had only been playing poker for about one to two months, I used to Instagram message him hand histories and bad beats, and he would send me back tips and strategies to try to get better. It's pretty funny that five and a half years ago, I was playing one to no limit talking about $100 pots. And now I'm playing heads up against the same player in a 5,100 game over $20,000 deep. With that said, let's get to the flop. Nine, five, deuce, two diamonds, huge flop for me. I flop the nut flush draw, two over cards. He checks to me, I bet $1,300. I'm expecting him to fold or call here. I don't feel like he should really ever have any raises on this board in a four bet pot, but he does find the raise to $4,000. I look over at him and ask him if those are all the big chips he's playing and how much money he has behind. He's got about $16,000 left in his stack. Kind of an interesting spot. If I had aces, kings, and queens here, I would most likely just call. Maybe I would go all in with a hand like pocket jacks or pocket queens without a diamond for protection. I would most likely call here with all my strong hands, so I'm going to call with my draws as well. This pot is getting huge. 12,000 in the middle. Turn card is a king. Not the best card, not the worst card. Alec decides to slow down now and check over to me. This is another interesting spot. Once he checks, I feel like he's got hands like pocket tens and pocket jacks raising to see where he was at. Maybe he could have a hand like king queen, king jack of diamonds. I could bet really small here, but if he shoved on me, it would be a gross spot. So I decided to check behind, try to take my equity to the river, and I hit it. Nine of diamonds, the nut flush for me. The board does pair. The action's over on Alec. He's got $16,000 behind, $12,000 in the middle, a huge pot brewing early on in the stream. Let's see what he does. Or a made hand. And the board pairing diamonds. What he's Ooh, doing, man. That's what he's call. doing. It's literally what Mike just said. He chose the rep diamonds and Lexo had them. Usually a I like big, him. Y'all can keep him around for a little a bit. Big, I like him. A big About 20 seconds of thinking and Alec goes all in. I snap call with the nut flush. He tells me you're good. Ace 10 of diamonds is going to take down a $45,000 pot. The biggest pot I've ever played in my entire life by over $20,000. And the biggest game I've ever played in my entire life as well on the entire four hour drive up here to Jacksonville. The nerves were getting to me. I was excited, but also super stressed about playing the biggest game I've ever played against tough players. And just like that, within the first 30 minutes of the stream, I get a complete double up sitting on over a $45,000 stack. This is what dreams are made of. Unlike other sports, when you win big in poker, the best etiquette is just to take the chips, stay stoic, and not really give much emotion away. On the outside, I'm trying to remain calm like I've been here before. On the inside, I'm screaming to myself, hell fucking yes. After winning the biggest pot of my entire life and a glass of wine, I'm feeling a little bit frisky and put on the $200 straddle under the gun. This game is big. A raise from under the gun plus one to 500. Alec makes to call. I complete for 300 more with a suited or offsuit king. Flop comes out king 10 seven two spades. Checks to the under the gun plus one player who bets out $500. Alec folds and I feel like on this flop, the under the gun plus one player is going to be c-betting with a wider range of hands. Hands like ace, queen, ace, jack. 
All 10x hands, all flush draw hands. He could be beating me here with a better king or aces, maybe a set of tens, but he really shouldn't have any two pair on this board, raising from that position with a straddle on. So I decided to raise for protection, not for a bluff. I make it $1,700 to go. And this, as you can see, is our first mishap of the night when we're running right into ace-king offsuit from Hunter. Top pair, top kicker for him. He thinks for a little bit of time, if he calls here, I thought to myself, probably just going to shut this one down. However, after thinking for about 90 seconds, he actually lets this one go. I think the graphics were right, and he had top pair, top kicker. Either way, I'll take it. A nice little win for us, winning another thousand-ish dollars in this hand. Moving along, about 10 hands later, Alec opens up the action in the hijack to 250, and it doesn't get much better than this. Pocket aces for us. I re-raised to $800 before the button code four bets to 1,800 bucks back over to Alec who makes the fold and now the actions back over on me my decision now is do I five bet jam for my opponent's eight or nine thousand dollar stack or do I slow play here and just call with aces I feel like both options are fine but given the fact that it's late position raise re-raise and re-raise I want to keep all of his bluffs in there as well so I slow play trap aces four bet pot to ten nine five pretty good flop for me I think I check over to my opponent who checks this one back turn cards a jack this board is super wet and connected a lot of two pairs sets straights on this board I check again and the button checks back again. I feel like now he definitely has ace king, ace queen, maybe pocket queens that he's checking here trying to get to showdown. When the river pairs the board, I have the ace of diamonds in my hand. I just think I have the best hand here probably 99% of the time. Any hand that's beating me would most likely bet the flop or the turn. So I'm going to go for it against his single pair hands, his pocket queens, so maybe even... An ace high hand, I don't know, if I was bluffing, maybe I would go big, so let's go big. When we have it, I go all in for his $7,000. He's got ace queen high, can't call, and we win another pot. Smooth sailing so far, as you can see, bottom left corner, almost a $51,000 stack. I bought in for $25,000 just an hour before that. That is a profit of $26,000 in just about an hour of playing poker. Definitely my best hourly yet, but there's still four more hours left in the stream. Let's see if we can hold. As if I didn't pick up enough big hands already, now it is time for pocket queens. I raise the 300 from under the gun plus two. The button off a short stack re-raises me to $1,000. Greg Cold calls this $1,000 out of the small blind. And now the action's back over on me. I'm going to be re-raising again here with pocket queens, but I want to make it a sizing that Greg can come along with a call once he just calls out of the small blind versus a short stack three bet, I feel like he's going to have some middling pocket pairs, some suited ace and king high hands. So I want to make it a sizing that he could call with those hands. That's not too big. So I just make it $4,000 to go. Asaf goes all in off the button. Greg folds his ace 10 and we're all in here. Pocket queens, $10,000 pot. Let's see this run out. May not even need to clip this game. Oh, I talked him into that. Yeah, way to go, Adonis. Yeah, that was my fault. Nah, that was my there. fault. I'm sorry. Soft hits the ace. I'm sorry. Nah, that was all me. That one was me. I'll take that one the chip. So unfortunately for Lex. Oh, there goes the queen across the table. Ugh, puke. Soft's gonna get the full double up. So quite gross losing that one. 72% favorite with pocket queens. We should have another $5,000 in our stack, but an ace came out on the flop. Still have to remember though, we're up $20,000. Moving on to the next hand. Although I just won one of the biggest pots, actually the biggest pot of my entire life, I actually think this hand coming up is one of my favorite hands I've played in a very long time. I raise under the gun plus one with ace nine suited to $250. Hunter, who's been playing pretty snug this entire stream, makes the call next to act. I put him on suited broadways, smaller middling pocket pairs, maybe some suited aces. Going to the flop here, heads up to queen 10-4 one club on this flop i should have the range advantage i can have all the strong queens pocket tens aces kings i'm gonna bet here trying to get him to fold out sixes sevens eights and nines make it 450 dollars. i also have some backdoor equity here with some straights and some flushes 
When he makes the call, I feel like he's most likely going to have Queen X, 10 X hands, maybe King Jack suited, Ace Jack suited, maybe Ace King. Turn card 8 of diamonds doesn't improve me at all. It does give me some outs to a straight now. With a 9 in my hand, I think I can continue to barrel here to try to get Ace Jack hands to fold, 10 X hands to fold, King Jack with some equity to fold possibly set up a triple barrel bluff against a queen x hand so i'm going to continue now for somewhat of a small sizing i would say this is like a feeler bet i make it 600 dollars to go the reason i go smaller here is that if he just calls this 600 dollars, i'll put him on a draw or just a one pair top pair hand if he had two pair like queen 10 suited pocket fours pocket tens for a set I think he would most likely always raise this turn bet. So when he makes the call for 600, I think he's always just got a king queen, queen jack type of hand, or maybe a diamond flush draw. So when the river cards the three of clubs, I'm sitting here with ace high, most likely up against a pair or a better ace high hand. I have to bluff to try to win this one. If I bet a medium sizing, he'll probably just call with his top pair. If I bet a small sizing, he's almost always going to call with his top pair. But if I over bet the size of the pot, maybe I'll put him in a really tough spot with those king, queen, queen, jack hands, and maybe we can get the fold. So that's what I do over betting here to a $4,500 sizing. In all my years of playing poker, I don't think I've put out a bigger river bluff than this. $4,500 with stone cold nothing. Trying to stay stoic, trying not to give anything away. My heart rate is definitely increasing now as my opponent is in the tank. I actually think I have one of the better hands to bluff with here. I don't have a diamond in my hands, so I unblock him from having missed flush draws. I have an ace in my hand, which blocks him from having ace queen. For top pair top kicker i have a nine in my hands so i block him from having jack nine for the not straight all right enough with that mumbo jumbo talk let's just hope this man folds his top pair and over bet puts him in a tough spot i'm praying i'm hoping he finds the fold let's see what happens so now it kind of doesn't matter that your hands kicker is a little bit on the weaker side just have a pure bluff catch. Are you, doing, are you doing direct to consumer with this? Or? If he reads the overbet as a bluff, that's what's going to happen. But you know, earlier we saw Hunter make a very tight lay down to Lexo. It's hard to know if the game dynamic at that point was Hunter thinks that Lexo's on the tighter I side mean, of things. He's definitely deep in the tank. He's considering all his options. Um, he's not snap folding. He's not snap calling. It's a brutal spot. It's a real bad spot to be in. And there is the show it to him. You show it to him. Show him what you did. We get the fold. I did not show my cards, just slid them into the muck and took down over $1,000 worth of profit, a little bit back from that Queens versus Ace Jack hand. Next up, Greg raises out of the hijack to 250 bucks. There's a three bet by Todd on the button to $1,300. I'm in the big blind now with pocket eights. Kind of a weird spot, whether we want to call here with eights, do we want to fold, or do we want to put in another raise? Given the fact that Greg has been playing a lot of hands, maybe Todd is picking up on this and 3-betting him light on the button, so I decided to go with the aggressive route and 4-bet, make it $3,500. And as you can see, we are running right into a brick wall, which is Black Pocket Aces by Todd. He puts in the 5-bet to 15000 Oops, and we lose $3,500 in this hand. After losing this hand and then another hand, my profit went from $25,000 to $13,000. Still can't complain, but it's always not fun to be upstuck on the night. You know what is a good way to get un-upstuck? Is that even a word? Pocket aces a second time. The $200 straddles on hijack. Toby makes it $500. I make it $2,000 with the Rockets. Back over to Toby, who is definitely a tough player to play against, and he does not want to just call my $2,000. He has a hand he wants to put in another raise with. He makes it $4,500. This is now the second time this session we've gotten 4-bet. 
with Pocket Aces, the dream spot. Earlier on in the session, I re-raised Alec Torelli and got 4-bet by the button, and I had Pocket Aces, and I slow played pre-flop and just made the call. This situation is a little bit different. The $200 straddles on Toby raised from the hijack. I raised from the small blind. He would probably be calling with a lot of his middling strength pocket pairs. When he 4-bets here, he's representing a very strong hand or a bluff. I have two aces in my hand, so I block a lot of his bluffing hands, like ace-five suited, ace-queen offsuit, and an ace-king hands. So I feel like in this situation, he probably just has pocket jacks, queens, and kings. He only has 50 big blinds left with the $200 straddle on. Not going to mess around this time with aces. Not going to slow play. I am all in. Unfortunately here, as we can see, results-oriented. If I just would have called, maybe he would have bluffed off his stack, but you never know. Maybe he would have hit a two-pair straight or trips, and we would have gotten cracked. Either way, take down over $5,000 here with aces. We have now officially bumped up the game. 50, 100, 200. Greg raises it up here in the cutoff. Alec makes the call. I call for 300 more with king four of diamonds in the $200 straddle and flop a flush draw on a jack eye board. Action goes check, check, check. Turn card 10 of diamonds, I hit the second nut flush. Alec now leads out for a $1,000 bet. A pretty big bet on this board. I could raise. We are relatively deep stacked, over $24,000 effective. I could call and allow Greg to be in there with worse hands. And I decide to just call here with my king high flush. Greg makes the call as well, drawing dead. And the river card pairs the board with another jack. I actually think this is a pretty good card. I feel like Alec could easily have a jack X holding here. But after thinking for a little bit of time, he now slows down and checks over to me. I'm going to bet, obviously, with my king high flush, but I don't want to bet too big. I want to get called by Greg's 10x hands. Maybe if Alec has a 10x hand as well, he wants to call with. So I just bet small $1,800. Greg gets out of the way with his queen high. And then Alec gives me the interesting news when he check raises huge to an $8,500 sizing. And right away, I do not feel good about this spot. This is when playing on a poker live stream in a huge game for tons of money really puts on the pressure and stress. I don't want to make the wrong decision and look stupid in front of thousands of people. I also don't want to make a bad call and lose thousands and thousands of dollars. I start to really break down this hand. What kind of hands would Alec call out of the big blind when there's a raise by Greg? Well, hands that are beating me are pocket sixes, pocket fours, Jack 10 for a full house. Maybe he just calls preflop with pocket 10s. And then the ace high flush is beating me as well. What hands could he have here that he's bluffing with? Well, maybe he's bluffing with a hand like ace 10 with the ace of diamonds, representing a flush, blocking full houses. Maybe he's bluffing with a hand like 6-4 suited when he blocks me from having full houses, but that seems a little bit overreached. I just don't think Alec is going to be bluffing here very often, but can I fold my king high flush? I just don't know. My hand is super strong. I am beating some smaller flushes, but the thing is, Alec's just not playing smaller flushes in this manner. If he had the queen high flush, or the eight high, or nine high flush, he just wouldn't play it like this. He would most likely just bet the river. I feel like he's got a full house, so I decide to make the fold. Chat saying no way he's folding here, but he does fold here. Holy cow. He's getting ready to say we might not know for a while. I was all hyped up to ask what everybody's opinion is here. Lexo doesn't take super long. Came to the right conclusion and let it go. Now we are playing this stand-up game. If you do not win a hand, you have to pay out each person $200 at the table. It is heads up now between me and Asaf, who is on the button. Luckily for me, in this game, I get pocket queens. I raise to $1,000. Asaf has jack six suited. He can't really do anything but fold. Other players fold, and we do get by in this stand-up game. We don't have to pay out the penalty. However, we start a new stand-up game right after this, and it's down to me and one other person before a huge hand comes up when I get king-queen offsuit. 
I'm heads up in the stand-up game against Alec. He folded this hand, so if I win, I don't have to pay out the $1,400 bounty. I raised to $1,000 again, just like I did with Pocket Queens just 20 minutes earlier, hoping everybody folds preflop again, but that doesn't happen. Lee makes the call with Pocket Nines, and we go heads up out of position to 10-5-3. I check over to Lee. Lee has been getting out of line this session. Big bluffs, playing a lot of hands. So when he bets $2,000 here, I feel like I could have the best hand with King Queen. He could be stabbing here super wide. He's also probably one full bottle of wine deep in the evening. So I decide to float here out of position. Pretty light, but the stand-up game's on. I'm up against an action player. Turns a jack. Great card for me. Action goes check, check, and the river does not give me a straight or a pair. It's an eight. I'm sitting here with King High, pot $6,000. If I don't win this hand, I may have to pay out the bounty. My opponent bet the flop, check back the turn. He probably doesn't have a too strong of a hand. Maybe a 10x hand, maybe a 3x, a 5x, pocket 6s, pocket 7s, maybe ace high. I don't beat any of those hands. I either check and give up and lose this pot, or I bluff. And I think this is a good spot to bluff. And I bet big. 8 thousand dollars to go here with king high once lee checks back the turn on the jack of spades he's pretty capped to only having a one pair hand at best if he would have flopped a set turn two pair or had an over pair on the turn he would most likely continue to bet so with this sizing i'm just trying to target those 10x hands those pocket pairs like i said earlier sixes sevens nines 5x hand. As you guys can see, Lee does have one of those hands I thought he may have. Pocket 9's third pair on this board, and he hasn't folded yet, which I guess makes sense given the fact that my line isn't too credible. I mean, I raised to $1,000 preflop, check called the flop, check the turn, and now I'm betting 8000 on the river? What kind of hands am I repping here? Well, I could play pocket 10's like this, pocket 8's like this, maybe aces and kings and queens. I'm representing a very strong hand, a much stronger hand than he has with pocket nines. We have a non-believer on our hands. The longer he's tanking, the higher my heart rate is increasing. This is the biggest bluff I've ever made in my entire life. $8,000 in the biggest game of my entire life with King High. I'm hoping, praying he folds after 90 seconds, he finally comes up with a decision. Not the action. There he is. Wow, he puts in the call. call. Massive 22k pot on his way with just a pair of nines. I get completely owned here. Calling me with third pair, I lose a $22,000 pot, and then I also lose the stand up game against Alec. I owe every person at the table $300 worth of a penalty. In a matter of six minutes, I lose $14,000. Just four hours before this, I was up 25k, winning the biggest pot of my entire life. And now five hours later, I'm booking a loss of over $5,000. I end up racking up my chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out for the night. Well, not exactly the result we wanted. Right when I sat down, I won the biggest pot of my entire life. $45,000 in the middle. That's a record-breaking pot. $50,000 stack, that's another record. $25,000 profit in a session, another record. Three records, back to back to back. I'm feeling good, I'm playing good, I'm winning a ton of money. Then unfortunately, over the next four hours, I lost, and down, and lost, and down, and I ended up losing $5,800 on the session. That's a $30,000 downswing in one single session. It was miserable, it was tough to take, it was frustrating, but, on the positive note, this was the biggest game I've ever played in my entire life. I've never played 5100 before, never played 5100, 200, never bought in for $25,000. I've never been that deep stacked with that many players in my entire life. And I felt really good. I felt super comfortable. I didn't feel nervous. I didn't feel scared money. I felt like I could get in there. I felt like I could play my game. I felt like I belonged. I felt like I could battle with these guys. And to be honest, that was like my biggest takeaway from this entire game was that even though I lost, I felt like I just gained so much more experience. I felt so much better in this situation. Rewind back to two years ago when I was playing live streams in Texas and I was playing like a nit and I was playing scared money and I feel like I didn't belong. I just feel like a completely different player now two years later and I'm excited about that. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Lex, 
why would you bluff off $8,000 at the end of the night when you're up $14,000? You could have just sailed right in to a nice profit, and I agree with you. But I'm trying to play exciting poker. When I go on these live streams, I'm trying to get invited back. I'm trying to get on other live streams as well. I want to be an exciting poker player to watch. I don't want to be boring. I don't want to play like a nit. I don't want to nut pedal and just wait for aces and kings. And I don't want to short stack. I want to play deep stack. I want to play high aggressive, high variance, big pot poker, put people in tough spots. That's the kind of poker I want to play. Sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes it doesn't. So if we go over this session, earlier on at the beginning of the night, I took a high variance, highly aggressive play when I four bet ace, 10 of diamonds on the button against Alec. I could have folded those cards pre-flop. That would have been totally reasonable. I could have cold called the button and maybe won a three or $4,000 pot. I decided to go with the high variance route, the exciting route, the highly aggressive route and four bet. And I ended up winning the biggest pot of my entire life, $45,000. I also triple barrel bluffed $4,500 on the river with ace nine of clubs versus hunter's queen jack and he folded his top pair so it worked there. I won those pots but unfortunately at the end of the night I put in an $8,000 bet. I got called by third pair and ended up losing all my profit but that is just what's going to happen when you play this kind of high variance, high high aggressive kind of play style. You're going to win big pots, you're going to lose big pots, but all in all, I felt like it was an exciting session. I felt like really, really good with the way I played. And if I really kind of look back and like look at the big picture, it really is kind of crazy how far I've come, I guess, in poker. Like earlier on in the video, I talked about how I used to send hand histories to Alec Torelli playing one to no limit five years ago. And now I'm sitting right next to him playing a huge $45,000 pot, it really is insane. I mean, way back in the day when I would play one to no limit, my goal was to always, from the beginning, to play bigger and to get better and to push myself. When I was playing one two, I always would look over at the two five and I would want to play there. When I got to the two five, I'd always look over at the five ten. I want to get there. When I get to the five ten now, I watch these live streams and I go, I want to play there. I want to play that. And I feel like this was a great stepping stone, a great start to potentially playing more and more high stakes games. And I felt super comfortable. I didn't feel scared money. I felt like I was able to put on somewhat of a show and uh, I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the way I played. I'm really happy with the way I executed. And uh, sometimes, you know, you're gonna win big pots. You're gonna lose big pots. But overall, I'm definitely happy with the experience. I'm hoping to continue to push myself, continue to play bigger games, bigger pots, bigger buy-ins. And uh, hopefully we just keep moving upwards and upwards and I'll be bringing you guys along there with me. I really appreciate you guys every single week showing up, watching my videos. If it wasn't for you guys, probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. So I really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Best Bet Jacksonville. They put on a great stream as always. The dealers, the staff, the managers, the players. It was an awesome experience. Every time I go up to Jacksonville, I love playing at that room. I'll be back there in the future, hopefully playing big games. I got some big stuff coming here in the future. Make sure to subscribe, almost to 60,000 subscribers. Also, please like the video and please comment. It helps YouTube push it out to more people. And until next time, I'll see you.